keep your eyes open. Step one, save. Step two, just get basic rates of return. And then step three, keep your eyes open. Step four, take action. Don't get into analysis paralysis. If you see a deal, freaking throw down. what is normally a very boring topic that I don't really like to talk about, we're going to make it fun. We're talking taxes, LLCs, protecting everything that you've, you know, built up in your real estate portfolio. I am bringing on an amazing man. He wears a lot of different hats. He's an entrepreneur, investor, CPA, a tax attorney, and when you look up his name online, it actually says he's a YouTuber. That's what he's like most famous for. So I'm bringing on Mark Kohler and he's also a, an author and I'm going to throw out some of his books at the end. So you want to stay till the very end. I'm going to give you a special word. I'm going to give out 10 of his books. All right. So let's welcome Mark Kohler to Crafted Entrepreneur. Well, thanks for having me. I am so excited to be here. This is going to be just amazing. So, you know, in your spare time, you have so many things going on, but I like to start it off in a fun way. When you're not doing all of those things and in business mode, what do you do for fun? Well, I'm trying to dominate in pickleball in Scottsdale, Arizona. So bring it on couples, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't play pickleball, but my mom is on a, she's on a pickleball team and she actually just decided she's going to move in with us. Cause we have like a mother-in-law unit and you know, I, she was like all worried because she's moving from a couple hours away. She's like, where, how close is the pickleball place? And I'm like, it's down the street, mom. You're going to be good. Newport beach country club. You're going to join the pickleball oh, team. So gosh. I yeah. love that. That's awesome that you're doing that pickleball. And, yeah. but of course you've got to make it competitive. Sounds like. <laughs> yeah, we got to make it competitive. So I, I'm a, I love to do a variety of things. I'll hit, go to Hawaii later this month, do a little surfing, or I like to e-bike or go play golf or go hike, fish, and, you know, all the goodies. I love the outdoors and I'm just grateful to be here. I, and you know what I, I love is I love small business. I love <laughs> Main Street America. I've always been an entrepreneur. And so if I had to choose between doing what I'm doing here with you, Kayla, or being on a golf course, I would be here every day of the weekend on Sunday. So this is, this is a lot of fun. I love that. Well, you've had so much success in all of your entrepreneur ventures over the years, but I'm curious, what has been your biggest failure and what have you learned from it? Well, thank you. I, I was going to say, what? I've had all these successes. I've had failures too. From a business perspective, other than, you know, having teenage daughters and trying to be the dad that does it all, you know, that you never know if you're a win, you win there, but, um, <laughs> and I've got twin girls. They're adorable. They're 25 now, and they're just out killing it with their small businesses. I also have a 20-year-old uh -huh. that just finished her esthetician program, and she's going to open a spa. So we have to do a lot uh -huh. of research to open that spa, you know? So I just want to point that. And that's all a tax write-off. <laughs> totally. It really is. Um, anyway, well, I started a few businesses in my 30s because I got excited. You know, when I was, came out of finally law school and CPA and started a law firm and accounting firm, and I controlled my own destiny. You get excited and you just kind of get to be a squirrel, you know, like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy a rental. I'm going to start this business, that business. We started a little commuter plane gig from Southern Utah to Phoenix. We started a little nutrition thing. I started like three or four businesses. I never had any business starting, but I was so excited <laughs> as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of them failed. Two of them, three of them did great. And then I've Really, my bread and butter is now our law firm, our trust company, helping people self-direct, helping accountants and accounting work. You know, you just get good at helping small business owners and you're like, and I still own rentals and all that. But So you started things because you were excited about it. Maybe you were passionate about it. And when did you know to throw in the towel and be like, okay, this is a failure. We need to walk away. Well, that's a great question. And I've done a lot of workshops <laughs> where I make some enemies. So I'll talk about the difference between men and women when it comes to that. A lot of times men will be too quick to leave a project. They're not emotionally invested enough. They're like, if I'm not making money within three months, I'm out of here. I was aware of that. I tried to be, have a good balance. I really wanted to start businesses where I gave them a chance to really percolate and are they going to be successful? There's a point where they don't. And then women, sometimes on the flip side, can be too emotionally, but I can't let this go. You know, I'm into it. I'm believing it. I can't let it go. And they should have let go a long time ago. And I think we can learn from each other as genders that there's that middle ground of when we have a project, we go into it without too much emotion, but some passion to keep that fire burning. And then when things aren't happening, 
we pivot. And I, I hate to see when people say, well, small businesses, so many fail in the first five years. No, a good business owner pivots. Your business may not look the same five years from now. That's okay. Right. That doesn't mean you're a failure. It means you're smart. I, I love that because as I just rebranded, so I'm feeling very smart right now. Love it. Yeah, so, I love it. So far in your career, what has felt like the biggest accomplishment that you're super proud of? Well, it's probably in the older you get, you kind of, and some of you listening here, and I've talked to my kids a lot about this. When you find out what you, your calling, when you find out this is my calling, like this is what mm-hmm. I love doing and I'm good at it and I enjoy it. And you find, this is my purpose. I was just having this talk with my 20 year old, like I said, that's going into the spa and uh, med spas and esthetician world. And, and she loves it. And I'm like, honey, when you're passionate about it, you're going to succeed. Like this, you got to find it. And so for me, it took it, it for 25 years. I know I look like I'm in my thirties, you know, Kayla, I know you commented earlier. I appreciate that ladies. <laughs> but um, anyway, I've had 25 years of being a tax lawyer. I've kind of got to the point where I'm like, I need to share this with other accountants and, and other enrolled agents and CPAs that are the accounting industry is on fire. So many people are frustrated. Many of you listening, you may be frustrated with your accountant. No one's giving me tax strategies. They, all they tell me is no, no, no. And they charge me too much. No one calls me. The accounting industry is broken in a lot of ways. And about two years ago, I said, that's my vision. I'm going to change the accounting industry. I'm going to train more accounts and CPAs how to be advisors. And I created a Main Street Tax Pro Advisory Program. I've got four or five books and I've got a great, and I'm grateful for a great following. I've been very fortunate to try to be one of the top five leaders in this industry already. But now I'm like, I got to educate my fellow accountant. So the biggest thing I'm excited about, Kayla, is I'm training CPA. I'm, I'm like the nerd of nerds which I just love. So I'm Michael Anthony Hall in 16 Candles. I'm in the bathroom holding up the underwear. That's me. And so I got all the nerds around me. I'm like, let's make accounting fun again. Let's freaking kick butt. And so I'm really excited about that program. And it's really changing a lot of lives exponentially because their clients Mm -hmm. are hearing from them. So I can train someone with a thousand clients rather than going out and finding a thousand business owners to find. So it's really been cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a huge legacy that you're creating for sure. Now, you've worked with a wide range of clients over the years, so small business owners to really high net worth individuals. How different is your advice for someone that's just starting out in business, which they might be listening in right now, and just starting out in investing versus those that are high net worth individuals at, you know, a different stage in their business and investing? Great question. By the way, for those listening, we're going to throw down some tips here and you're going to get some free books. You're going to love it. Get a pen. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not kidding. If I, and I mean this, honestly, if I don't save some of you listening today, five to 10 grand in taxes this year alone, I know that sounds bold, but it's true. So many accountants just miss the low hanging fruit. I'm going to do that. So you, you stay tuned people, but you know what, on that note, (laughs) it's almost the same freaking advice. 90% of the time I I'll do the same. I have a trifecta. It's like a little diagram and I'll build it for a client worth 20 million and I'll build it for a brand new young couple or a single person starting a small business, same trifecta. I go, this is the principles. This is how you build it. This is how you go. And whether they're super rich or just getting started, we all have the same framework. We all have the same goals. You just have a few more zeros. That's it. It's the same strategies. Let's just do it freaking right. It's that simple, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. Can you show us what the trifecta is? Oh yeah. This is amazing. Buckle up people. Okay. Can you go whiteboard? Okay. We're going whiteboard. Okay. The trifecta is three parts, obviously trifecta. Um, The base is going to be typically, um, I'm going to stack it. It's going to be, let's get, move that out of the way. Okay. It's going to be your revocable living trust. I'm going to put, I'll spell it out for everybody. Revocable living trust, whether you're rich or poor, young or old, no kids, Kids, single, whatever. This is RLT. This is your revocable living trust. This would be called your estate plan, you know, for lack of a better word. Will, trust. Now, I'll give you the purpose of this in a minute. And then also down here is your 1040. This is your tax return. Money roll, you know, like water rolls downhill for me. It all goes downhill. It's going to all end up in your tax return. Then I split your life in half, and we're going to put your ops over here. Now, operations on the left and your holdings on the right. Now, the holdings create passive income. Passive income is better income than 
ordinary income. Now we got to have ordinary income to pay the bills and to build our assets over here, because here's our assets and we want to build those up and let them work for us rather than our ass over here <laughs> doing all the work on the left. Sorry, you know, for the kids in the car. Okay. So we want to not work so hard on the left. We want to take our money and distribute it and place it over on the right. So we got operations on the left, holdings on the right, estate at the bottom. This is our legacy. What are we leaving? What's the plan? And we want to tie it all together. So at a basic level, some of you might start with an LLC, and then you're going to graduate to the S-Corp sooner than you realize. You've got to make sure that every small business owner of our end that's making more than 40 grand a year, you're going to be an S-Corp, and I'll explain why. But you're going to graduate to the S-Corp when the time's right. It's going to be owned by your trust. So that's the left side of the, of the three-legged stool. So the trust will be owned by your, uh, the trust will own your S-Corp or your LLC. And then over here is going to be your LLC for your rental, for example. So I have an LLC for my rental and I have an LLC for my consulting business or my brand or my products or services or whatever I'm doing. And so out here I'm making and selling and making money. And then I'm going to take this profit and distribute it over onto the right side and start buying more assets, notes, invest in funds. Ooh, maybe a fund in Arcadia, Arizona, getting yes, into a multi-unit, right? Woo! Let's deploy our money. Now, there's a this last piece, as you might have here. And I'm going to just simplify it, guys, because I love to draw these. So we have our trust. We are going to start funding. In fact, there's another angle for this. I have so many versions. You people would love it. Is we might have a, a little company in the middle. It's like a family office, a little family company that helps support your rental properties or your operational business. S Corp or LLC. Again, it's all owned by your trust down here. And we're going to split this passive side in two pieces because we got to be building up tax free wealth too. So we want to be building up our Roths, our IRAs. Our company may even sponsor its own solo 401k. And these Roths and IRAs can invest in LLCs or funds to be building wealth passively but we're funding it and we're paying our kids out of our family company that's supporting our others. And so now all of my kids have Roth IRAs. Our family has Roth IRAs. We're investing those together in what we love and know best. And we're running our business through our ordinary income, saving on taxes everywhere, right now, auto, home office, electronics, PDAs, laptops, dining, travel, everything I can think of under the sun, I'm going to be writing off to create the least amount of taxable income and then pushing all of my earned income as much as possible over to the right side. And whether you're worth 1 million, 100 grand or 10 million, it's the same machine. I want this machine just building, boom, boom, boom. And, and, they, um, and it's just incredible. So it's, that's the theory there, so. Wow, okay, well, if, you, if you're not looking at this drawing right now, I want you to head over to YouTube and look at Kayla Craft's channel and watch this whole thing. You're going to want to take screenshots. Then you're going to want to go hire Mark's people to help you with all of this because that was amazing. Thank you. So pumped. Yeah. So, so many people, you know, I want to get, I want to push people to what you have going on because clearly, you know, you have built amazing businesses. You've helped a lot of people. And so many people, they leave their jobs, right? They start making money in their side hustle or they decide they want to be an entrepreneur. They'd rather work long hours for themselves than work for somebody else. What is the biggest mindset shift business owners need to have that will, you know, help them really become a successful entrepreneur where they could look at your trifecta and not be overwhelmed by it, but be inspired by it and know like, oh my gosh, you know, my destiny is in my hands and I'm partnered with the right people. Like, you know, like what is that big, yeah. the biggest mindset shift from employee to entrepreneur? You bet. And, and great question. And first people know that it's baby steps. The trifecta can be so simple at first and then we, it's a building block and we build upon it. I threw out a lot there because I wanted you guys to go, oh my gosh, that's me. I've got 10 rentals or five rentals or nothing or this or that. So it, it is building. Here's the mind shift change. And you're going to love this. Kayla, this, this is where it's at. People, and, the, and I know I'm being jaded as your tax lawyer. Your number one cost in life is going to be taxes. Your number mm -hmm. one cost over your lifetime is going to be taxes. Your number one threat to your assets is a lawsuit. 
but no one wants to talk about it. Heaven forbid we have a conversation about taxes and asset protection without wanting to shoot ourselves in the head, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it simple. Let's get together on this. Let's freaking knock this out. And here's the mind shift change, people. You are the captain of your ship. There is no lawyer that's going to look out for you every day. There is no accountant that's going to call you up every new time there's a new freaking law. They're not going to call you up and handhold you through every little decision. You are the captain of your ship. Now, you got to build those first mates. You got to have your team. You got to have your sailors on board. And if they're not helping you, you're freaking throwing them overboard. But you're going to be the captain of your ship and make sure that when you talk about, hey, I want to hire my kids in my business and I want them to have a Roth IRA. Can I do that? And your, your account looks like a deer in the headlights. You got the wrong sailor on your ship. Yep. You got to be able to understand the basics of the trifecta or your structure and why I'm an LLC, why I'm an S Corp, what's my payroll, why am I using QuickBooks, how many rental properties should I put in one LLC, where's my LLC, just the basics. I'm not telling you to do your own freaking tax return or set up your own LLC. Hell, we've got services to fix all that. But it's just owning it. And when you own it, that's how the rich get richer. They own it. You go find a millionaire and they could do it. They would explain their structure to you because they, they've had to figure it out because they know their professionals aren't going to do it for them. Now, they still use the professionals, but they take orders from them. They're not taking orders from their accountant and what's a write-off. They're finding an account that knows what the hell they're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I've been on both sides where I didn't understand and I've had to throw people overboard as I started <laughs> to understand, oh crap, this is the wrong person. That's, <laughs> that's helping you me level out up. on my ship. Yeah. Yeah. You level up. Yeah. So you talk about this concept of having, you know, a personal economic model. What does that mean? And how does it help us business owners create financial freedom? Here's my mantra that you're going to see in my books, Tax and Legal Playbook, Financial Freedom, is I want my clients not reinvesting every dollar back into their business. We've got to deploy that money and create more diversity because when you put every dollar back into your business, you're a one-trick pony. Anything goes wrong, it could be a nightmare. So I'm constantly telling my clients, and I preach about this everywhere I go, to be looking out for one rental property a year. Now, that one rental property could be an investment in a multi-unit with a LLC with others. It could be into a fund, but you're putting some of your money in real estate every year. The wealthy in America, 95% of all my clients own real estate in one shape or another. You get, in, get on board, people. You want to be wealthy? You got to start loving it. Now, you may say, I want storage units. I want multifamily. I want single family. I want low-income housing. I want venture housing. I want RV parks. I want, fine, whatever speaks to you, but get in it. Get in the freaking game. Number two, you're constantly funding your tax-free bucket. This is how the rich get richer, is they invest with Roths, and they're investing in funds with their Roth IRA, their 401k. How did Peter, the news went nuts last year when they found out Peter Thiel had a $6 billion Roth. Mitt Romney, a $100 million Roth. And these mega Roths are everywhere. We have clients with 20, 30, 40 million in Roth that had zero 10 years ago. Because they've learned how to invest in real estate and startups and, and crowd funds and, and Main Street with their retirement accounts. So I want you building up tax-free wealth and tax-free cash flow with your Roths and your real estate. Yeah, you're going to go do your business and your passion and all that. But we're going to take the profit from that and freaking redeploy it so that you can do what you love and not have the stress every month of having to cover that nut. We need cash flow people. And that's, that's that financial plan. And your trifecta builds that because you're growing it. You know where you're going. you got a 10-year plan and you can see it and you can see the vision. Mm, I love that. Do you have a percentage like rule for how much profit you should be taking out of your business and reinvesting into real estate or not reinvesting, yes. and investing in real estate? Okay. Yes. Is this and in you're going to love it. <laughs> well, yeah, yes and no. Yeah, it is. I mean, percentages are because everybody's different, different stages of life, different family situations, different levels of income. So those percentages are going to vary. But the one I can't take credit for it. And Kayla, you would freaking love it. It's awesome. Uh, Kevin Hart was interviewed by Grant, Grant Cardone on one of his 10X events. It was down in Miami. If you, if you go to YouTube people and it's about a six minute video, but let me just summarize it right here. Kevin Hart had some IRS issues. He was making money in Hollywood. He was like, you know, and he had some reality checks and this was after the experience and he was so insightful. I just loved his passion. And he talked about investing in real estate and small business. And Kevin Hart is an entrepreneur first. He's a brand and he talks about his brand. So anyway, it was funny case who goes, say I make X dollars. You go, and Grant Cardone's like, how, do you make, how much do you make in a movie? He's like, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to say how much I made in this movie or that movie. Let's say X dollars. 
you know, whatever it is. He goes, the first half, put it in a bank account. That's for the IRS. It's not yours. It's going to go to the state. It's going to go to the gov. Now, it may be less than a percentage. And if it is, you get a refund. We can redeploy that. But right out of the gate, he goes, just take 50% of your wealth. It's not yours. Don't think it's yours. When you go out and have a big closing, you make money, take half of it, peel it aside. Call it the tax account. It's going to go right over there, tax account. Then with that remaining 50%, he goes, I take another half of that and I go, that's where I'm going to invest. I don't know what yet. I don't know what real estate deal is going to come down my pipe this next three months or next year, but I'm going to set that aside. That other 50%, that other 25% of the whole is going to go over here in this account. It might go into my Roth. It might go into my 401k. It might go over here in a, just a savings account so that when I see a deal, I can jump. That mm -hmm. last 25%, that half of half, that's what you get to live on. He goes, that's what I live on. I don't know. I already know the guys got their 50%. I already know my 50% of that's going over here to invest. I'm going to live on 25% of my income. And if I can be in that range within just a few years, you're out of debt, you're building wealth, you've no, no IRS problems, and then you get smarter with your money. So your effective tax rate, if my clients are at a, aren't at a 20 to 25% effective tax rate with state and fed, something's wrong. I want to keep their effective rate down. So when we're setting aside that money for taxes, at the end of the year, I got money left over. Well, that's another rental property. That's another fund. Boom, let's go. And so you start to become a machine and you, you run that ship in the course you want. Is this what you call the strategic spending plan? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've got um, str strategic. I use, I love the word strategic. It's all over uh, in my books and stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I, I call it a strat plan. So I call it, I call it what I, is it maybe, I don't know about spending plan. I'll be transparent. I love clients and I do this myself at the beginning of the year. I set up my strat plan for the year. What's my goal? Okay. And it's going to feed into my 10 year plan. I'm going to look out what's my future 10 year plan, five year, let's work backwards, three year. And then what's my strat plan for this year? What's my strategic plan? What am I going to invest? What am I going to do? What education do I need? Sometimes it's reinvesting in myself for a bit. It's building a mm -hmm. better platform. I know in your social media training, you're like, people, let's get your platform where it needs to be. Because before you can scale, we got to have a, a, a ground zero. Let's get to a, a point where we can build from. And so anyway, everybody, I love the strap plan idea. I carry around a calendar in my strap plan everywhere I go. And <laughs> okay, so we all need to get our strap plans together for this year. I love it. And get with an amazing CPA from Mark's <laughs> company. Okay, we're going to have links for you guys. So. Let's talk about what does it look like to have like due diligence when you're hiring people that are coming alongside to be your shipmates, right? Because I think that I wish I would have known more about like how to do your due diligence on people <laughs> like mm. 12, 15 years ago, because I feel like I would have more money now, but I've gotten mm. like, you know, I, I think for now I go off of my gut because I've learned like every time I go against my gut, when I meet somebody then I get burned. I get screwed. So that's like one of the most powerful players. Obviously there's other things, but what is your due diligence that you would say, okay, if you're hiring an attorney, if you're hiring a CPA, what are the things you need to ask? I'm always going to be transparent and go at you when I want. All right. I mean, I'm going to always not just give you an answer you want. I'm going to say, yes, if I may add to that gut comment is it's got to yes. make sense up here. And for those listening on the podcast, I'm pointing at my head. I got to make sure it makes sense in my mind and my gut. It's got to be aligned because sometimes I trust my gut and someone's a good talker, you know, and I feel good about it. And then I, I get bamboozled. Um, sometimes it makes sense up here in my mind, but then there's something off, you know, and you, and like you said, if, it, if something's off down here, I, I'm getting screwed, you know? So, um, so anyway, we want our mind and our, our heart, if you will, or our gut to tell us and be in alignment. The next thing is being the captain of your ship being a jack of all trades. It's being, if you had to, you could go do the rigging. You could tie the boat off. You could go figure out the engine. You could go figure out the sail if you had to, but, but knowing enough to interview. So when you, when you follow my podcast, Main Street Business Podcast, or you check out my newsletter, get my YouTube channel, you subscribe, I'm going to be feeding you videos like, how can you write off your pet? How can you write off your auto? How could you write off your RV? Or am I doing a short-term rental strategy? What's the exception for the short-term rental? How can I write off my board of directors meeting with my kids and my spouse down in Cabo next month? How can I make sure all of my family is part of my board of advisors on my LLC? Blah, 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 blah. All these little things, you're like, holy crap, Mark. 
you just rattle off five or six things I haven't even heard of. What are you listening to? You know? Right. I mean, sometimes those sexy podcasts are fun, but just listen. I'm going to make it easy for you people so that when you go to interview your accountant, if they look like a deer in headlights, you know, I'm out of here, you know? And I have a network. I have a network of accountants I train around the country. You're not going to come to my firm for an accountant. Our law firm kicks butt. Get your plan done. Get your trifecta. Then you can shop it and find the right accountant that's going to do all those little baby things for you. The bookkeeping, the payroll, the tax returns, advise you throughout the year, call you every month. And the lawyers are going to be there behind the scenes holding it together to protect you. Oh, you freaking love it, Kayla. It's so awesome. I love that. I love that. Okay. So it's, it's about expanding your mindset. I talk about this so much on the podcast and Mm. over on my email list too, because you don't know what you don't know until you start listening to the right people who have gone before you, who, you know, know things that you need to know. And that's just as simple as it can be. Like people, the number one podcast out there are true crime. And I'm like, why do people listen to this stuff? It's absolute garbage. Like, I don't want to know like any of that. I don't want to fill my mind with any of that. I want to fill my mind with stuff that Mark's talking about. Well, I thought true crime was kind of like the news. I mean, I, I, I listen, (laughs) I watch extra and I, you know, I need to know, you know, if Jennifer and Brad are getting back together, I need to know about it. You know, where's Beeb this weekend? (laughs) I mean, I got to catch the news, but uh, yeah, but you, you put in a little tax and legal with it. I'll keep you up to speed. I mean, we're following all the, you know, the Murdoch trials that, you know, we we're, we're in, now it's Lori Vallow, you know, where'd the kids go? But anyway, the point is <laughs> it can be fun. And I love the mindset of more education, just knowing a little bit more. And, uh, and if you can get it with someone that makes it palatable and enjoyable and fun better yet. And so we'll, I'll dumb it down. We'll have a good time. You know, we got to write off your little Fido. Do you own a dog? Do you know, 58% of Americans own a dog. Do you, do you I do not own a dog because I don't have time for a dog. I have three kids that are very no, okay. needy. But your kids need a dog. What kind of mom are no, you? They don't. They don't need a dog. <laughs> they have hockey and lacrosse and friends. We're good. I love. Okay, so we I, get- I get this all the time. Like you need a dog. You need a dog. And I'm like, no. Like I, I'm the type of person when when I do something, I want to go 110 percent on it. Mm-hmm. And I would give like the bare minimum to a dog. And so I think that's wrong when people do that. Well, yeah, like, well, we'll make them a tax write-off. Then you'll feel better. About it. <laughs> now, are all the kids on payroll? Do you have your kids on payroll? My kids are on payroll. Yes. You're okay. And you got them on because Roth IRAs? Because I had somebody on my podcast a few years ago that wasn't a, an accountant, but she goes, you know, you could pay your kids 12,000 a year. And we switched accountants actually after that, because I was oh, like, nice. Okay. No W now they're all under 18, right? They're under age 18. Yes. Okay. Make sure no W2s. So there's, for everybody out there, you never W-2 your kids under age 18. Make sure that they're on other, uh, another expense. Because when you pay them on a W-2, it's unnecessary, at first of all. And I don't want you to withhold FICA. FICA is not required for your kids under age 18, everybody. So with your small business, I got to give a tip. Okay, Kayla, can I throw down no, on this bring tip? It. I just bring love it. Bring it. This is good. Bring it. Okay. For all of you out there that have a small business, it could be a rental property or an operational online business, sales services, product, whatever. Get your kids involved. Get them on. If they're over age 18, I'm on on the board of directors. I'm on on the board of advisors. Even if they're at college, they're helping out. And we're going to make sure they get a 1099 once they turn 18 and they're out there. All my kids get a 1099 for me at Christmas. Kayla, it's adorable. At Christmas, they come down to the Christmas tree, go to their stocking, and there's a 1099 in there. They just love it. They play with it for hours. They get to play with it again on April 15th. It's a, they just love it. They really do. And so, so now under age 18, We don't ever pay our kids out of an S-corp. If you have an S-corporation, we don't pay our kids under age 18 out of an S-corp. We set up that little model that I showed earlier where we have a little management company or a a Schedule C, as in Charlie, and we pay our kids, and now they have earned income where they can fund a Roth IRA. This year, they can put in 6,500. And I'll get kids on payroll as young as five years old because they can shred paper, clean the office, polish shell Mm -hmm. casings with their fingers. I mean, all those goodies. So they can do all these fun things to help the business. That was a joke, by the way. And so I want the kids in the business and getting paid. I want to be careful. I don't want to say W-2s. And then now they've got a Roth IRA. So now Kayla's three kids have Roth IRAs that are a player in her next fund. So as her fund is making money, that money's going tax-free to her kids year after year after year, new Roth, new Roth. And when they go to college, any contributions to the Roth, they can pull out tax-free for college. Fund liquidates, tax-free to the Roth. No one will ever pay tax on that Roth. And Kayla got a write-off 
along the way. So you get a write-off for paying your kids to invest tax-free to take out the money tax-free. Where's a pen? Go do it. Pen drop. Cool. I just yeah. did pen drop. Pen drop, mic drop. Go. I love that strategy. You were talking to Grant Cardone the other day. Um, I watched it on your YouTube. You talked about the three major benefits of real estate investing. You said Ooh, capital, okay. preservation, cash flow, and tax benefits. Can you break those down for everybody listening? You bet. Um, the beauty of real estate is that it's multifaceted. The first thing is we want this capital appreciation. Dirt is so reliable. And over the last 50 years, and go to the National Association of Realtor website, you look at all the different websites, real estate has outperformed the S&P 500. We know dirt will go up. And yeah, there was the 2008 crash and some markets are up 5%, some are 15 or 10. But over time, it's dirt. You can't lose it. I can lose stock. I can lose some weird investment, but I want, I want a hard asset. And Cardone loves to talk about that too, hard asset. So I'm going to get imp- appreciation, which is tax deferred. It can even be tax free. I might do a 1031 exchange, a charitable trust. When you die, Kayla, one of your best tax strategies is when you die because you get stepped up basis. Not a lot of clients buy into it, but I mean, it's, it's not bad. Okay. So then anyway, number two, that was another joke. I'm trying to keep you in. I'm a long way from that. <laughs> yes, you are. You hope, you hope, you never know. Okay, number two, we love that cash flow. Real estate oftentimes generates tax-free cash flow because as you're creating cash flow and the leverage that you get with it, because you put in money and 95% of real estate is leveraged, which is good debt. I'm all about Dave Ramsey. We're going to stay out of all the bad debt. But if I can have debt make me money, that's good debt. That's that's progressive debt. So now I can like- buy into a real estate project, get depreciation on a building worth a million, even though I may only put in a hundred grand. I put in 10 grand, a part of a $10 million deal, whatever. So I've got this ratio of I'm getting depreciation write offs against cash flow. And that cash flow, nine times out of 10, ends up being tax free. So I got tax free cash flow, tax deferred at the best, or at least growth. And then number three, those tax losses might be a deduction against other passive income. They might be deductible against my other income. So I'm getting tax benefits along with cash flow and appreciation. Now those tax write-offs, and I could go in more depth, you, some of you may have heard of the real estate professional classification and hours and maybe not hours, but what's my primary and, and then material participation. I love to beat it up because there are so many benefits with rental real estate. And, um, I, I, I just love it. Cash flow, appreciation, mortgage reduction. The mortgage is going down every year and the tenant's paying it for you. I didn't even put any more money in. And I'm building equity, not only on appreciation, but the property's going up in value and the mortgage is going down. So I kind of have a, a different quadrants I love to talk about there. And it's just, anyway, so I can, you got to cut me off here because I'm going to just keep going off. Kayla, okay. I, you know. So, <laughs> no, it's so good. I can keep <laughs> listening. So you say to buy one rental property a year and I tell people go into at least one fund a year, preferably sure. mine. Uh, <laughs> right. So like talk about the, the tax benefits, because from what I understand, you still get the same tax benefits because you get to this year, I think you get to do 80% bonus depreciation on your initial investment into a fund plus on your dividends that you get that's also a passive cash flow right so it's taxed differently yes i'm going to give you good news and bad news um let I me hear throw it. this out i want to hear it all okay you want to hear it? i'm going to tell you the freaking truth i'll never hold back okay first of all big picture when i say invest in a rental property every year that may be a fund that's buying rental real estate multifamily commercial com- buildings it could be you formed an LLC with your three best friends and you went out and bought a little Airbnb. It could be me buying my own little storage unit. It could be a single family home next to my grandma's house. And every time I go visit grandma, I'm taking a tax write-off. But you're looking at real estate and the fund is a wonderful model. So point number one, we need to be deferring taxes or doing it tax-free, buying real estate, one of the best asset classes out there with these bank failures this week again. What the hell? I want dirt. I want real hard freaking assets. Give me dirt. That's what I want. Okay. Now, point number two, when you buy your own rental property or you're involved in the process, so it's a Mm -hmm. LLC, maybe three to five owners, or you yourself own a little rental. And I know you do too, Kayla. 
when you depreciate that real estate, those losses, because you're materially participating, might be a write-off against your other assets. It depends on this real estate professional classification. Are you married? Are you single? Is your spouse a real estate professional or not? Now, those losses will carry forward. You're going to get to write them off. But if I'm not a real estate professional and materially participating, they're locked down. Even when I own my own rental. And because if I make too much money, some accounts are like, well, you don't need to buy real estate. You're, you, those losses are not a write-off. Oh, they'll be a write-off, but there might be delayed gratification. So when I go out and buy real estate, don't think you're going to do 80% depreciation on that cute little duplex down the street and write off your W-2. If you're not in the real estate professional realm, you or your spouse, and qualify, that loss, that 80% depreciation and cost seg is worthless. And I get out and tell people, don't listen to all these sexy people, oh, cost segs are great. Yeah, but if I can't take the write-off, what the hell is it worth? It doesn't make sense. So we want to make sure that we can take the write-off. Now with funds, there's give and take people. Oh, Kayla's fund is sweet. You put your money in. You get to see this cool, sexy building. You get to see the rent come in. You get great reports. You have your investor calls and Kayla's showing you what she's doing in the next one. And you're a part of a cool project. You've got real dirt, but you're in a fund. You're not materially participating. You're not there, people, where that loss, if there is an additional loss on that K-1, it's not going to go against your W-2. It's going to go into a bucket. It's called a passive loss carry forward. You might be able to use it against other real estate deals you're doing, which is great, but it's not going to knock off your W-2. So we have to realize, people, there's limitations. Uh, it's okay. I'm not a real estate professional. I'm cool with that. I'm still buying real estate, and I'm going to take that loss, and I, it's like a warm blanket. So I'm going to pet it, and I'm going to play with it, and, mm, and then someday I'm going to cash it in. So funds can be deceiving and uh, in that they, you want them for what they're great at, and then just know that any pass-through losses, you'll get them. They'll come down the road. The cash flow is usually tax-free. That's the beauty because all that cost yeah. seg you're doing is going to create tax-free cash flow. Well, the thing I like about funds for people is they can stay in their zone of genius, you know, and continue to do what they're good at, making money in their lane. And, you know, somebody like me that's out there looking at deals all the time and finding the best way, like, to have that capital appreciation and that cash flow, I'm out there doing that full time. And so it's helping them make money and multiply their money. It is. And, and I'll be honest though, too, it's, it's a balance because, you know, I won't put Kayla on the spot, but let's say her grandma lives in Oklahoma city, Oklahoma. Well, why don't I buy a rental property down the street from grandma? So every time I go to Oklahoma city, I'm getting a tax write-off. I'm checking on grandma. She's on my board. I'm writing off my trips. I'm writing off. I'm involved in that. I, I manage the property manager. And you can still qualify for the passive losses even if you have a property manager. But I'm engaged in it. And my kids might be going to college. They might be living in one of my rentals. My kids are not going to be paying rent anywhere. They're going to live in my rentals and go to college. So I'm now creating tax-free cash flow and internal rentals. And if I own a business, I'm my first best renter. So I'm going to be buying my own commercial buildings. Now, meanwhile, you've got the balance. You're like, now I'm involved in that. I got kids. I got a grandma. I got a business. Those rental projects make sense because I'm always my first best renter. Well, what am I going to do with the other 20 grand, the other 50 grand, that money in my old 401k? Oh, Kayla's doing a fund. Sweet. I'm going to stay in my lane. These projects that. make sense. And you're finding a balance and you get the best yeah. of both worlds. Great advice. I'm excited for everybody to buy a house next to their grandma. That's, <laughs> yeah, both of my grandmas are dead, so I can't do that, but somebody else should oh. do that. But <laughs> what's your advice for people that are listening in right now that they're interested in getting into the investing game, but they're honestly just intimidated because you go to YouTube and there's so many real estate experts out there. There's so many ways to get involved in it. How do you choose like what is best for you to invest in? Well, the first thing is everybody is you have to save first. You know, and a lot of people get in this paralysis of, I need to know what I'm going to invest in before I just save. Holy crap, people. The first thing to do is fund your Roth IRA for this year, 6,500 bucks. My next strategy, you're going to love this one too, Kayla. I call it matching out. If any of you or your spouse have a day job, and they do a match, maybe 4% of your salary. So if you put in five grand, they'll match five grand. Okay, cool. Get the match and get out. So you put in your five, double your money. So I got, I put in my five, now I have 10. That's a great, sweet, freaking ready to return. Then I go back out and fund my Roth. There's my 6,500. So I'm already saved 11,500 
to deploy. Just like Kevin Hart said, I may not know what my next investment is, but I'm going to set that money aside. That's step one, people. You can't invest in something if you don't have the money to invest. So I mm -hmm. want to get my kids' retirement accounts going. I want my retirement account going. I want to get my matching out at work. And then if you have a small business, you're like, I'm going to throw down. Now you do your solo 401k. And I have kind of what's called the side door 401k, where you can take your rental properties, fund a management company to manage your own rentals, and fund a solo 401k. So I can wipe out your income creating a Roth 401k. I mean, boom. Love it. Anyway, so what you do is step one is start saving. Step two, just get the money at a basic level of a money market even. Money markets at TD Ameritrade are paying 4.2% for a money market. This FDIC insured, throw the money in there. there in no bank failures, gonna, you're not going to lose your money and you can get at least 4.5%. That's unheard of. Five years ago, it was a half a percent. So I can get 4.2% on just a money market. I can also say, I'm going to do the S&P 500 no load ETF, exchange traded fund. I can go into a fund, just maybe it's five grand, six grand, 10 grand, and I can just get it working for me. Maybe it's a six, eight or 10% return if I'm lucky. Go out, look at the top ETF funds, but in S&P 500, you're going to be safe. This is what Warren Buffett did. Warren Buffett, Buffett made a challenge of the top three head funds managers in New York and said, hey, you go do your thing with all your crazy fees, I'm just going to buy the S&P 500. Whoever wins gets a million dollars donated by the losers to any charity they want. S&P 500, he won. It's simple, easy. Don't make it complicated, people. That's step two. So save, do the basics. Just get the money basically working. Then number three, radar. Reep, reep, reep. You're out there looking. Oh, Kayla's got a new fund. I want to look at it. What's your investment model? Great. You got this. You got, oh, grandma's, there's a rental that came up line next to grandma. Boom. My kids are going to college next year. Boom. I'm buying a duplex. I'm going to rent rooms out to everybody. Who knows? Keep your eyes open. Step one, save. Step two, just get basic rates of return. And then step three, keep your eyes open. And step four, take action. Don't get into analysis paralysis. If you see a deal, freaking throw down. I know some of your funds are accredited, some are non-accredited. That's okay, people. Depends on what, there's going to be something out there. And be careful going into real estate without getting a little bit of education. Start getting to know that mindset that you talk about, Kayla. Just getting educated. So, so important. How important is it to hang out with the right people that think like this? No. <laughs> I love that. Well, they all play pickleball. Um, so I got you. Um, you're going to, you know, you need to go hang out with mom. All of her pickleball friends, they're probably millionaires. You know, they're playing down at the club in Newport Beach. Pickleball. I mean, there's, there's yeah. your money. You're, you're trying to raise money. You got to go say, hey, if I beat in pickleball, you're in. I know. I actually, that's a great idea. I need to get into pickleball. Okay. I'm going to go sign up. Oh, they'd love it. Yeah. As soon as you play pickleball, they're going to go, what do you do, Kayla? Oh, I'm building a fund in Arcadia. P finding money is not hard. It's finding good deals. Right. Right. And so they're going to be like, what are you doing? Anyway. So what'd you ask me? I get so excited. <laughs> How important <laughs> is it to hang out with the right people that think the oh, same yeah, way? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That's why I get to be on your show. I'm hanging out with you. The first, many of you have heard, take your five closest friends, add up their income, divide it by five. You're going to be within 10%. So if you're not happy with the income you're making, maybe you need to level up on some of your friends that you're hanging out with. Typically, their family, get rid of them. I mean, they're miserable. You don't want to just go to family reunion, drop in, drop out, bring your KF bucket of KFC chicken and get out of there. Now, <laughs> besides that, <laughs> you want to, I think these networking groups are wonderful. There's female networking groups. There's male hangout groups. There's real estate investment groups. There's Forex trading groups. There's note investment groups. Now be careful people. There's a lot of con artists in those. Too. There's a lot of con artists and there's a lot of, Oh, you need to do my mastermind group for 20 grand and five grand in Vegas. I'll teach you the real strategies, blah, blah, blah. When you get on a phone call with one of my attorneys and they're building your trifecta, we're not selling you a workshop. We're not sell up selling you to a mastermind. You can run. We know all the sharks out We'll tell you to stay away from, you know, I've seen people spend 50 grand on workshops and they haven't even done an investment yet. Hell no. So start with the podcast, start with some networking groups, create your own little mastermind group. Oh, oh, I've got it, Kayla. You're going to love this. One thing I teach my book is a chapter. Every one of you that have an LLC or a corporation need a board of advisors or board of directors. I already talked about that. Sure, you're going to put your teenagers on there. They know everything. You want them on your board. They're going to tell you that too, that you're an idiot. So get your teenagers on there. They're always a good resource. But 
what I did, and all kidding aside, is this was about three years ago. Build your own board. Find men or women, young or old, entrepreneurs or not, find three to five of them and reach out to them. Say, I'm putting together a board just for my LLC, my corporation. I'm trying to build my strat plan for the year. I'm building my five-year plan, my 10-year plan. I'd really like to run it by you. Everybody loves to give free advice over a steak dinner. Say, I'm going to take you out to Ruth Chris, or I'll take you out to Capitol Grill, or we'll go to Mastro's. You know, Mastro's in Newport Beach. Oh, I love Mastro's there. Oof, so good. Okay. Right, right on. <laughs> oh, right off the 405. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, so you, you go out and build a board. So I went out to this farmer. He was an old attorney. He was out in the 15,000 acres of potato fields of Idaho. And I drove out there. We have a place out in Idaho. And I drove out. It's the new bedroom community for Hollywood. I just want to let you know, Aaron Paul, Breaking Bad's got a place out there now. Um, so I'm out there. I drive out to this field and I, uh, his name was Richard. I said, Hey, Rich, I get him over by his, you know, his shop. And I was like, Hey, would you be on my board? I just, I need to, I, I need some advice and some angles. I just don't know what I don't know. And he's like, really? And his wife pulled up and she's like, what do you want? I was like, would you guys be on my board? I'll take you out to dinner. Maybe we'll, we'll bring one of my other board members along or just be us. And I just like to show you what I'm doing. And I just could really use your advice. And they were moved emotionally. Aww. Sorry, I just got chills because <laughs> call your grandma, Aww. call your mom, call your dad. They're dying to give you advice, Kayla. They, they've, they've, they're seeing what you're doing, but they've got stuff to share. Reach out to those people that you love and are mentors to you and say, be on my board. Now, of course, you get a tax write-off when you go. <laughs> so, right. But the beauty is, is you're going to share your plan and say, what do you think? You don't have to listen to them. There's no liability to them. And this should be in your minutes. This should be in your LLC corporate book. This is building asset protection and stra tax strategies. You're knocking out three birds with one stone and you're wow. leveling up. Wow. So good. I love that. I I think that there's so much power in asking people who are in different walks of life or like, you know, just to take a look at what you have going on because they are coming from a different perspective and they might see things that you aren't able to see from your seat. Right. So, wow, that's amazing. So how did it go? You guys did a dinner and did they give you great advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, I've talked to him uh, on a regular basis. I actually bought a real estate lot from him, build a spec home and uh, they, they're just great people. And um, so, yeah, you never know where it'll lead you. I haven't talked to him in the last year, but you know, it's funny how you, you know, the divine, the universe, it's going to bring people into your life. And when you, this is where Kayla's mindset concept is so powerful because when you open yourself up to this guidance and inspiration and these other people in your life that could take you to that next level you've been dreaming of, they're going to come, they'll come, mm -hmm. but you got to mm -hmm. know what to do when they get there because they could come right by you and you don't even know it. You got to be thinking, you got to be looking and going, Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm building a small business. I could really use your advice. Can I take you out? Can we just go out and talk? I'd be so grateful. Can, what can I do for you? You know, how can I help you? How can I bless your life? And all of a sudden you're making friends that take you to freaking whole new worlds of relationship. Absolutely. Mark, where do you see yourself in five years? Well, this time of year, you know, Maui is adorable. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's adorable. just a perfect time of year. <laughs> Never heard well, Maui in, <laughs> explain that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, five years. I, uh, I, you know, I'm going to be keep doing what I'm doing. I'm not going anywhere for the next, my 10 year plan. I'm probably on an eight year plan before I tone it down a little. I'll probably have another book out. I want to have my next play button on YouTube. I want to be, I want to, I'm impact. I really, you know, I'm going to say this honestly. I won't be yes. I really want to be two things. I want to make sure that my kids are all integrated in their entrepreneurial dream and in my business as well. I believe in nepotism. Mm -hmm. I want kids involved in my business. I want them there alongside me. I want to learn from them. I want them to learn from me. Business is family and it can be hard. You know, we've had our, you know, knockdown drag outs, but they've also gone out and worked for other people and are like, yeah, family business is pretty cool. And I love them. And number two, I'm really, I want to take care of my employees. I want, we've got probably 150 employees between our operations and they, I sent them all a birthday card on their birthdays. I love to know, I don't know all their names as much as, as, much as I'd like to, but 
I want to, I want, when you know that you're supporting a family with your idea and concept, it's incredible. Okay. So that should be your next two books on the nepotism and (laughs) how to take care of your employees. I'm going to write those down right now. I would buy those books. I would promote those books because I want my kids. I want all three of my kids. That was part of the reason why I rebranded was because none of my kids wanted to take over mommy millionaire. And when I started to talk about crafted, that was something all three of my kids got excited about. And I was like, yes, we're building it. So anyways, I love that. I love that. That's where you're going. Yeah. I love it. And all kid, all my kids go to my workshops, help sell books. They get sick of it and then they love it. You know, it's good daddy daughter time. And when you're in business together, you play together too. It's just such a neat thing. Hmm. I love that. All right, Mark. Well, this conversation was amazing. I feel like I'm going to have you on several more times because there's so many other topics we need to talk about so much more education that crafted entrepreneurs need. So oh, where can everybody honored. find you right now? Well, uh, probably the best spot to go would be markjkohler.com. I'm sure it'll be down there in the description, markjkohler.com. I have a 30 ultimate tax guide. It's free. You can download it. You can sign it. When you get it, I have a weekly newsletter, free. It's got my blogs, my YouTube videos every week. They're on my website. You'll find links to everything. We have a real estate tax summit, a full day just on real estate real estate tax strategies later this month. I'll um, There'll be a little discount code there and and you can link up with the law firm that's one thing i'm just going to leave that challenge to kayla we talked about earlier is work with kayla if you want to reach out to our law firm because when you have a plan it really can set you free and Mm -hmm. knowing that someone like i've done ten thousand consultations when i was averaging three to four consultations a day over 300 days a year let's say on average minus weekends and i did it for 15 years 10,000. I see the patterns. My attorneys that I have on my team, you're not paying per hour. You're paying for the last 10,000 hours Mm because you want to know what we figured out. I've seen people that are train wrecks. I've seen people killing it. And when I get on the phone with you, do you think you're the first one I've ever seen doing it? It's business. And what are you doing? And what are you, and we want to help tailor that to you. And, and so I challenge all of you out there, if it's not my firm or whatever, find someone that knows small business, that knows the legal and tax that can do it affordably, get you a plan and then revisit it every year and set that trajectory for the future that is just going to leave a legacy and change your life five or 10 years from now. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's taking time. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's awesome. Anyway, so there's that. It's a game. It's a game and you have to learn how to win it. Right. So I want to give away 10 of your books. Let's give away the guide Woo! to financial freedom. What wall street isn't telling you. And in okay. order to, you know, be entered to win, you need to DM me, Mark, just DM me, Mark over at mm. Kayla.craft and you're going to be entered in to win. We're going to give away 10 books. Okay. So remember, as you're listening to this right now, it's so easy. Open up your Instagram app and DM me Mark's name. Okay. And we're going to pick 10 of you to get a book. So that's easy. And that's like abundance right there is that you could just win that right away. So yeah. I can't wait and to see I will you guys take over 10 books. Hand. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for doing that. And I'll go back to my office. I'll sign 10 books. I'll put them in a box to you, get them over to you. Or we can drop ship them wherever you want. And we Let's would go. love to be a part of it because we want to just get that word out there and we'll throw in something bougie too. So appreciate Thank you. The we love bougie over here. That's amazing. All right. So uh, I love this episode. I want you to take a screenshot, tag both Kayla Craft and Mark J. Kohler over on Instagram and we'll reshare it. Ask us any questions in our DMs. And thank you so much for listening into the show today. Mark, this was amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to educate our audience. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody. Keep living the dream. Don't give up.